Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Jen and Dan's Natural Healing with Plants. I am Jen or Holistic Jen. I'm a health educator and a health coach and a master herbalist. And I help people with culinary uh, nutrition, culinary coaching. And I'm here with my partner, Dan. Hey, Jen, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, my name's Daniel, or Dan the Natural Man on the internet, and I'm a master herbalist and health coach. I help people get healthier by using herbs, plant-based nutrition, and exercise. Yes, and we both went to the School of Natural Healing. That's where we met, and so we both are master herbalists. We both believe in root cause care and bringing the body into balance. The body was created to heal itself. We just have to put things in place so the body will take care of itself. So today we wanted to talk about um, pain management and how to manage pain, relieve pain, ease pain, um, because that's something that is just so common to so many people. And painkillers uh, can be so harmful, uh, you know, from they can they can really set you back and they mask things. You know, if we have pain, that is an alarm in your body saying something's wrong. We need to look and see what is creating the pain. Sometimes we know what it was, um, but we need to get to the root cause to help the body heal to permanently relieve the pain. Yes, and I like the way you say that because a lot of people will go to a pain management clinic and a lot of times they'll just give them these very strong painkillers and those are highly addictive. I mean, there's a epidemic in America, people getting addicted to these painkillers prescribed by the doctors and and we could go on and on about that, but they also have a lot of side effects like organ damage. <laughs> so, Right, right. Yeah. And so what are some things like, what is the first thing that you think we should do when someone, you know, says, well, let me back up a little bit. You know, what will happen with, to me is someone will call me or contact me and say, um, I've been taking Tylenol for blah, 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 or Advil for blah, blah, blah. And I want to get off of this. So what herbs should I take? <laughs> well, here we go. But, you know, I like, well, I actually make a tincture that helps people. It's got turmeric. Turmeric's a big one that I use because it's, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory. But you do have to mix it with, a, you know, some kind of, it was called peppercorn, black pepper, because it <laughs> helps the absorption. Right, right. And, you know, of course, the, uh, I combine that with ginger. And you can also use white willow bark. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too, is the white willow bark. Yeah. Um, but one of the first things that I'll do when someone asks is I'll say, you know, why are you taking the Tom, you know, or the Advil or whatever it is that you're taking so that we can figure out, you know, what's, what's going on? Why are you taking this to begin with? Um, is there something else that we can do in addition to using the herbs too? Um, and a lot of times it's inflammation, which is why the turmeric helps. Turmeric is such an anti-inflammatory as well as the ginger. Ginger, I don't know why ginger doesn't get as much um, attention as the turmeric because they're both fabulous. Um, yeah. And there are some people that do have, um, are more prone to high levels of uric acid and kidney stones. And so for those people, I do watch for curcumin. Curcumin can... Uh, actually not be the right thing for someone with a history of kidney stones but then we have to get back to that root cause too why are they having kidney stones and so um a lot of times you know if you're taking maybe you have kidney stones and that's why you're taking pain medicine then turmeric's not gonna really help um but like i said we have to get to the root cause but there are some other things that can help too and I really like things like some homeopathic remedies too. Um, Arnica, Arnica is fabulous. And um, peppermint, menthol, you know, that cooling effect too. Um, but pain can come from so many different levels too. You know, like, is the pain a headache? Is the pain, you know, from an injury? 
it, you know, any anything like that, inflammation and stuff like that. Yeah, you have to look at their whole lifestyle again, the way we always start with a client, but you're right. If it's a headache, it could be a migraine headache. It could be caused from stress or not drinking enough water. A lot of people don't know that if you're not hydrated, it can cause joint pain. It can increase your <laughs> the risk of having headaches. And of course, you know, Jen, you talk a lot about gluten. Gluten can inflame yes. people. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to say next was the food. It could be something that you're eating. And um, for me, it's um, peanuts. Um, but for some people, I mean, and sometimes you know right away that a certain food is causing inflammation or pain, but sometimes you don't. Like now when I eat something like peanuts or peanut butter, I, I usually a couple hours later, I notice right away. But it used to be I didn't notice for like three days. And so it just depends on where you are in, in your health. Um, how well you can tolerate certain things that maybe are inflammatory to you, but you don't know it. Um, like certain foods, I'm trying to think of something right now, like, well, some bell peppers. So some people, bell peppers are fabulous, very high in vitamin C and antioxidants and fiber and water and all of these things. And they can be wonderful and nourishing for one person, but someone who has a nightshade issues, it's the wrong food for them. And so- it's, we have to look at everybody individually, first of all, and realize, you know, when we're looking at pain, sometimes we have to look at the food, you know, sometimes we have to, and like, like I said, I mean, I know someone who can't even eat apples. They have a reaction when they eat an apple. And so it'd be the perfect health food. Um, but for them, it's not the right, the right food. And once again, we have to, why we have to get to the root cause of, of why, but whenever we're dealing with pain, first, we have to look at the individual and see what what's behind this pain yes it's very interesting i think yeah. uh, i read an article well it wasn't articles one of the classes from dr schultz there's a lady she had lower back pain and she'd been to all these specialists i think it was uh sciatic nerve pain which is supposed to be incredibly painful and she'd been to chiropractors and doctors and other practitioners nobody could figure it out and schultz asked her have you ever done it? Have you ever done a colon cleanse? She goes, what does it have to do with my back pain? He goes, he, and he said, well, if your colon is enlarged because you're backed up, it can actually press on nerves. And so she did the colon cleanse and that's what it was. She had, she was backed up and it was actually pressing on that nerve. And when she cleaned her colon, the pain went away. So that's another thing we always talk about looking at is the bowel movements right right yeah which sounds so simple yeah but for some reason it's not something that we go to right away a lot of people don't want to talk about it i don't know why but it's uh, it's very it's very important to have a good bowel movement i mean at least two or three a day i like to have and of course we yeah. talk about that a lot because your gut health is also going to lead to inflammation if it's out of balance so mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it affects your mood, it's going to affect other parts of your body as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So other than that and herbs and homeopathic remedies, what are some tools that can help with pain management? Well, I like, um, if you can afford massage therapy, I think that if you can find a good massage therapist, if you have muscle pain, that is excellent. Yeah. I, I have one in town and she is a miracle worker. Yeah. 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 I was thinking about that and chiropractor, even reflexology. Uh, even yeah. acupuncture helps some people depending on what's going on. Right. Right. So there are other tools too that are useful I'm looking into. And a good physical therapist. If it's oh, any, yeah. some kind of a muscle injury, a joint injury, mm -hmm. they can work wonders. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it could just be something simple, you know, it, something out of alignment too. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, can you think of anything that we've missed? Let's see. Of course, I have found over the years, if you're having stiffness in a muscle or joint, sometimes if you just start walking like a walking routine, I mean, you probably woke up, Jen, before with a stiff back or a leg or something. If you just go on a walk, 
it'll start to loosen up and feel a lot better. A lot of times we're just stiff from sitting too much, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, and our bodies are made to move and a body in motion stays in motion. So yes, um, trying that, yeah, don't let the pain make you just stay where you are and not move. Yeah. yeah and water true. therapy comes to mind. Like there's most of your gym, especially your YMCA's have a full exercise, which is incredible for people with, a lot of joint pain because you can exercise in the water and it takes the pressure off your joints, but you get to move them and loosen them up. And so right. it's great. And right before you said that, I was thinking of uh, hot and cold therapy. Yes. Yeah. Hot and cold therapy. So where you apply heat and then you alternate with cold and just alternating to help um, pump blood to the area and you know, the heat brings the blood to the surface and then the cold moves it away. And so you're just kind of pumping blood to the area. Or even uh, castor oil packs. Yep. Yeah, can be helpful in certain under certain conditions. Castor oil is wonderful fat for many many different things, but it this depends on you and what's going on. I can't think of it. Well, I think we covered everything as far as natural pain relief, but all these things I've, I I make it sound. Uh, kind of impotent but it's not if you incorporate some of these things you'll be surprised how much better you'll feel because i was listening to a coach at one point he's working with some old guys that had arthritis in the knees and he was teaching them how to squat properly mm -hmm. and over time when their muscles got stronger their knees started to feel a lot better because the muscle surrounding your joints is actually if you get them strong it takes a lot of stress off of your joints right so strengthening is strengthening and stretching muscles. Everybody should be doing that. And that, that may be one of the reasons you're in pain because you're weak and stiff. Right. Right. So Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great solution. Anyway, if you are dealing with pain, we want to hear what you've tried. Um, if you learned something new today, if you enjoyed this episode or even if you didn't, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so as we wrap this up, I want to remind you to share this with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And once again, comment because we, we do love you.